built a mancha? When did they build it? Located upon a hill 600 meters above the Adriatic Sea in Albania, Amantia and its port Oricum are mentioned for the first time by pseudo Silax in 330 BC. Yet there are specific features of this fascinating fortress, which is indicative of a now lost civilization. Polygonal masonry, advanced megalithic archways, among other ancient anomalies, litter the site, just like that of Delphi located within Greece. Recognized as Greeks by the Thero Rhodokai of Delphi, the inhabitants were allowed to take part in the Delphic competitions. The true builders of the original site, however, remains unknown. The massive, once impenetrable walls were built before the end of the 4th century BC, and literary sources report them as an Illyrium rather than Epiroti or Macedonian foundation. However, any explanation as to how these ruins were constructed remains absent. Several monuments at the site still survive to this day. The fortified polygonal walls measured at over 2 kilometers long, a gated entrance, a temple now attributed to the Greek god Aphrodite, and several tombs in the northeastern necropolis. Additionally, like many other areas claimed as the work of the Greek Empire, an impressive stadium also still remains, built east of the ancient city on a natural terrace. Clearly indicative of a tremendous age, any unexplained architecture attached to the stadium, however, has now been lost. But the site of Delphi, the focus of later inhabitants' devotion, still possesses a polygonal floor. One of the reasons for the construction of the site, and indeed what we believe was a later re-inhabitation of its geographically strategic position. Amantia occupied an important defensive position above the Alus River Valley to the east and overlooked an ancient route to the coast and bay of Alon. Although, like many other sites in the area, they are claimed as Grecian relics, any explanation as to how these feats were achieved remains unexplained. Thus, we feel any continued attribution to a known ancestor can be argued as inaccurate. It is a site which we find highly compelling. There are many ancient sites which we have already covered here on our channel that, regardless of the unexplained features we continue to expose, are little researched or indeed revisited by mainstream academia. These sites are predictably given an illogical explanation for their origin and creation, dismissed and ignored, as if the book regarding their history is complete and thus closed from further study. However, there exist some sites that required such a long time excavation that many researchers, some funded, others with independent interests, were able to reveal simply astonishing features ancient feats of engineering before they were attributed to groups who were simply incapable of achieving them. The Hypogeum in Malta is one such place, a place we have covered before, that regardless of the academic denial of unexplained discoveries, continues to be well known for the 6,000 ancient burials found within the ruins, with no less than six elongated unexplainable skulls possibly attached to corpses discovered amongst them. These reported remains later vanished and are now utterly denied as having ever existed. Yet so many researchers became aware of these discoveries, later sharing this cover-up with the world, the official museum and curator tasked with the responsibility of caring for the site and the countless remains found within, is still, to this day, inundated year by year with requests and calls regarding these unexplainable remains. So many, in fact, that the official body was compelled to put up an official statement regarding the lack of any such remains in their care, along with a denial of them ever having existed. However, there are many more anomalies, no less astonishing, still hidden within the hypogeum. Anomalies which are no less difficult to explain or indeed deny as existing. Known as the Oracle Room, there is a place within this complex construction which, if one stands upon a specifically made altar, 
their voice can mysteriously be heard throughout, even at speaking level, as if amplified and complemented by the structure's entire design. Yet the most interesting thing regarding this incredible feature is the resonance in which it converts one's voice to and the effect this can have on the human brain. Known as the holy frequency, the hypogeum not only carries one's voice throughout, but does so at 111 hertz. Paul Devereaux, an archaeoacoustician, a professor from Cambridge University in the UK, has also discovered that the burial mounds of Cairns also resonated sounds at this mysterious 111 hertz. Devereaux investigated this intriguing relation of 111 hertz and found out something quite interesting. He realized there were many ancient texts describing beliefs which are based on a divine sound or divine frequency principle. According to Devereaux, Pythagoras created his musical scale starting with the note A, which curiously resonates at the frequency of 111 Hz. Additionally, further research with MRI scans has shown that the brain switches off the prefrontal cortex and also deactivates the language center that is responsible for holistic processing, creativity, intuition, and inducing an emotional plateau at exactly 111 Hz. This reaction many field tests revealed resulted in an experience described as a divine level of meditation in a number of subjects. This trance, some now believe, allows one to get connected with the universe, God, or a creator. The question is, who knew such advanced knowledge so far back within antiquity? How were they able to create such stone structures which amplified one's voice to exactly this frequency? It seems preposterous to continue to attest that this amazing structure was somehow built by our lesser capable modern ancestors over 3,500 years ago. With such amazing discoveries and cover-ups which have been made here, we feel that we have merely scratched the surface in modern times of the secrets this mysterious place must hold. It is a place which is undoubtedly highly compelling.